Welcome to the 1913 Colliery Village. During your visit here, you'll discover what life was like for the Pittman and their families who lived in places very much like this. The pit cottages are where colliery life is portrayed through daily activities such as bacon and mat making. Welcome to number three, Francis Street. This was the home of an Irish immigrant Catholic family who had moved here to find work in the mines. Once you had a job in the mine, you were given a free house and an allowance of coal to keep you warm. This house had two rooms downstairs and one room upstairs, and it was usual at this time to have quite a large family. The parents would have slept in the front room or the parlour, but this room was usually kept for special occasions like weddings and funerals. The children would sleep upstairs. They would all go up the ladder to go to bed each night. By 1913, all the houses would have had a staircase put in. This was a modernization that the colliery company would have done because they owned the house. The grandparents would have slept in the desk bed over there. And it had a bed inside it that would come out at night and then put away during the day. We also have a nice new range in this house, which would have been put in by the colliery company. The range was a very important part of the kitchen. At one side we have the oven, and at the other we have the set pot, where you would heat your water. This range has a tap. Not many ranges had taps. Usually you had to ladle out your hot water from the top with a ladling can. We'd cook our bread in the oven, also cakes, pies, biscuits, all sorts of things. And the kettle was always on the top, ready to boil. If there was a few men living in the house, the father and sons, they would all need hot water to have a wash when they came home from work. And they would need a meal prepared for them after the shift in the mine. So there was always lots of work for the women to do food preparation, cooking, and of course cleaning. So even though the women didn't go out to work, they always had plenty to do. Rag rugs, known as rag mats in the north, can be seen being made in this cottage. These were made from old rags and worn clothes and were used as an extra blanket on beds when new. As they became worn, they were used on the floor. Past our board school, where you can experience the realities of early 20th century education, lies the Methodist Chapel. An important aspect of community life, our Methodist Chapel would have hosted sermons and screenings of magic lantern shows, as well as providing a venue for women's meetings and Sunday school activities. Hello there, and welcome to the Mahogany Drift Mine here at the Beamish Museum. This was a working coal mine. It first opened up in 1855 and finally closing down in 1958. But the original drift mine, when it was on coal production, it went a mile and a half straight in, it went a mile off to the left, and a mile off the right with workings. And the method of coal extraction used in this particular drift mine was a system known as pillar and stall. Because the coal seam was very shallow, 30 yard solid coal blocks known as pillars, had to be left in for safety. But where the miners had taken the coal out, those roadways had to be supported, and the normal method was a simple wood plank up against the roof with just a wood prop at each end of that plank, which is very basic, simple timbering. Down the mine, we can actually see a typical stall area of 1913. Each miner working here for eight hours a day and normally doing six days a week. First of all, the miner, he would start undercutting the coal using his hand pick in order to weaken the coal. And once the undercutting process was complete, 
He would then rig up the monkey drill, drill out the coal, and then stem with the explosives to blast the coal down. Once the coal was blasted down though, he would then start to use his coal shovel, start hand filling coal into tubs, making money. Also in the mine, we can see one of the earliest machines to be brought into the mines prior to full mechanisation. It was called the Siskel Coal Cutter. It was made in Sheffield. The miner would use the machine to undercut the coal in order to weaken it. Once the undercutting process was complete though, the whole machine would have to be stripped down and pulled back to one side. Hello, this is the winding house, and this is the steam winding engine. She was built in 1855, and she worked for 107 years till the mine closed in 1962. She's a vertical engine, that means all the heavy gears right above your head. The flywheel up there is 20 foot across and weighs 20 ton, and connected to the flywheel is the rope drum. On the rope drum, we have two steel cable ropes, which connect to the cages. They look a bit like this. One rope winds on, one rope winds off. One cage goes down, one cage comes up. Now to know where the cages are, the winder man has the depth gauge. As the engine moves, the pointer moves. The pointer tells you where the cages are. The chalk marks tell you where the coal seams are. The top mark represents the top of the shaft. The other four marks represent the coal seams. And to move a cage, you need a signal. I get signals from the top of the shaft, and I get signals from the bottom of the shaft. The men there are pulling levers connected by a wire, and every time they pull a lever, the pointer on this side moves as well. It took approximately 30 seconds to go down, one minute to load, 30 seconds up, one minute to offload. It's a very busy job. You don't stop at 12 o'clock and get your dinner. There's no tea breaks or lunch breaks. You eat here, and he'd go to the toilet here. He would get two pound a week, and he also works seven days a week. Next to the winding house is the heapstead. The winding wheel that sits on top is powered by the winding house. The wheel, in turn, powers the lifts that bring both coal and men to and from the coal seams below. These are the coal picking belts where stones and rubbish were removed from the coal. Come and experience the colliery village where you can hear, see and smell a time gone by. <laughs> 